So breastfeeding jaundice is where uh, there is relative dehydration in the first few days. There is reduced milk production. The letdown has not set in it and the baby has relatively reduced calorie intake. So this dehydration as well as reduced calorie intake may lead to increased uh, physiologic jaundice. So remember that the glucose is needed for the glucuronidization process in the liver. So uh, the conjugated bilirubin formation is reduced in these babies and the excretion of the unconjugated bilirubin is reduced. And when there is reduced milk intake in the first few days, the stooling pattern is affected. The baby doesn't pass stools till the milk uh, letdown establishes itself. And so this delayed passage of meconium as we discussed yesterday will also lead to uh, delayed uh, jaundice resorption. So uh, breast milk jaundice on the other hand is related to factors in the breast milk that affect the intrahepatic circulation of bilirubin. So we discussed the bilirubin metabolism yesterday. I won't be repeating it. However, uh, just remember that when the conjugated bilirubin is excreted in the stool, the glucuronidase enzyme from the gut bacteria as well as the one present in breast milk may break down and release the conjugation and this unconjugated bilirubin keeps recycling back into the bloodstream. So the beta glucuronidase enzyme is present in the human milk to varying levels and some others it's present to a greater extent and these are the babies where the jaundice tends to be persisting. Uh, so this is one factor to remember. The characteristics which distinguish the initial breast uh, feeding jaundice from the breast milk jaundice. So the suboptimal intake jaundice is the breast feeding jaundice what we typically say. Onset is just exaggerated from the physiologic jaundice so 2 to 5 days usually resolves by 2 weeks. So the, once the milk letdown is established, lactogenesis is established, this jaundice resolves. There is ongoing weight loss in these babies which gives a clue that is inadequate intake. You may have urates in the nappy, you may have a greater degree of weight loss as well. So uh, it's commonly seen in less than 38 weeks mainly because these babies struggle a little bit to establish lactation. Even though breastfeeding is natural, the more, uh, I mean the early term babies may struggle to cope with the breastfeeding and that's one of the reasons why the uh, I mean figure I showed you yesterday that bilirubin more than 20 milligram is significantly more common in the babies under 38 weeks. It's also related to the liver maturation being slower. And these babies because of the inadequate milk are fussy and uh, maybe uh, feeding difficulty noted as well. Breast milk jaundice on the other hand the onset is later mm -hmm. and it may persist for even up to 3 months. I have seen a few babies where it persists at a level of 10 to 12 milligrams, 3 to 4 months with absolutely no other pathology. In those babies I just monitor the conjugated jaundice once in 2 to 3 weeks and as long as it's stable and the bilirubin is coming down I don't worry. Of course we do the prolonged jaundice screen once a baby is 2 to 3 weeks of age to rule out thyroid problems, urinary infection and so on as well. The baby tends to gain weight well in these groups. There is not a breast milk output uh, deficiency. It's more about the beta glucuronidase which causes more recycling. Um, the stool output is good, the urine output is good and the baby keeps waking regularly. So this is again a summary of uh, the differentiating features with physiologic jaundice which is a little earlier than the breastfeeding jaundice which is exaggerated due to the lack of milk output. And the peak bilirubin 3 to 4 days in physiologic 3 to 6 days a little exaggerated peak and the level is higher as well 5 to 12 in physiologic compared to more than 12 in breastfeeding. So there are some babies with breastfeeding jaundice who end up needing phototherapy if it approaches the level of treatment. And uh, the total bilirubin drops to less than 3 milligrams by 1 to 2 weeks in physiologic jaundice and more than 3 weeks in breastfeeding jaundice because the peak is higher the liver maturation takes longer to clear the load. However in breast milk jaundice the peak uh, is uh, by uh, 5 to 15 days the level often crosses more than 10 milligrams per deciliter and uh, the bilirubin drops only by 9 weeks on average but some babies it may persist even longer. The incidence is uh, very common in full term babies physiologic jaundice in 56%. Breastfeeding jaundice is related to the uh, rate of difficult, difficulty in establishing breastfeeding. So a similar proportion of babies would reach a weight loss more than 10%, so about 12 to 13%. Uh, 
and breast milk jaundice is not very common it depends on the beta glucuronidase enzyme in the breast milk of the mother so it happens in 2 to 4 percent of the baby so it's not common but it's not very uncommon as well uh, of course formula supplementing will reduce the breast milk jaundice but the question is do we need to do that and definitely the answer is no because as you can see in the previous slide these babies are gaining weight very well they have uh, normal stools normal urine and are thriving they sleep well and uh, supplementing any formula in a breastfeeding baby is not acceptable unless there is an absolute indication like the bilirubin is approaching exchange transfusion level or the parental anxiety level is so high despite your best efforts to reassure them so bilirubin by itself is not harmful unless it exceeds a certain level to cross the blood brain barrier and so you can reassure the parents that this persisting jaundice is not going to harm the baby of course you do have the stress of having to come to the hospital or the laboratory to do the test once in two three weeks till it starts resolving fully however uh, the benefits of breastfeeding will far outweigh any stress so proper education of the parents explaining that it's only because of some factor in the breast milk and the fact that the bilirubin does not harm the baby you have done the baseline investigations uh, which rule out conjugated hyperbilirubinemia or urinary infection or hypothyroidism so show them all these factors and reassure them so uh, i think uh, we will see if there are any questions so there are no questions so i think i'll stop the discussion and uh, thank you for joining i hope it's useful